Hi guys and welcome back. Creating expressive and loose floral paintings can be a great way to produce dynamic and beautiful artwork. This is a video that I've created sometime last year and it has been getting a lot of views lately. I've gotten some comments from some of you saying that it's quite challenging to paint in this style. So for today's video, let's paint with me this lovely jar of wildflowers while I walk you through my thought process and tips how I usually approach this technique to paint loose in my style. I've also included some personal tips at the end of the video that worked really well for me, so be sure to watch until the end of this video. So let's jump right into it. First tip, select your color palette. Before I begin to paint, I would choose a few main colors that I like to work with which will be the colours of the larger flowers that will go in the centre and then pair them with some greens. A quick tip, instead of sticking to your primary and secondary colours, consider experimenting with tertiary colours. For example, instead of using plain green, try mixing your own green to get brownish green or even bluish green. This will give you a more interesting pop that will create a feast for the eyes. Here you can see that I'm using bluish purple, brownish yellow and a bit of pastel purple. Then pair this up with some brownish greens for the leaves. I like to swatch my colours on an old watercolour paper to visualise how this colour will work together. And once I'm happy with my colour palette, I'll jump straight in to paint. The florals that I usually work with are bright and bold. So it's important for me to start with a clean palette and fresh paints. Reusing old paints from your palette can result in more muted tones, which may not work well for the style that I'm going for. Instead of starting with a rigid pencil sketch, I like to just dive in and paint directly on the paper. This can help to reduce rigidity and allow the paints to flow outside of the lines. However, if you feel comfortable starting with a sketch, try creating a looser sketch to get a sense of the composition and placement of your florals. This will be the reference photo that I'll be working with. If you'd like to paint together with me, I've included the link to this picture in the description below. So right now, I'm just painting hands-free, starting with our focal point, which are the few main flowers in the centre. I like to leave out white spaces when separating between each petal in the flower, or between the leaves. Without it, it might just turn out to be a blot of paint losing its shape. When I first purchased this sketchbook, I didn't like how my paintings turned out when painting landscapes. The paints did not flow the way I wanted it to and it gave lots of undesired dried marks. So then later did I realise that the papers in this book are actually 100% cellulose. So this type of paper dries much faster than 100% cotton papers, which is why it gave all these dried marks. I learned to adapt painting to this paper by painting really quick. And with this mindset, I started making quick big brush strokes without putting much thought to it. And over time, these brush strokes became confident and loose. I guess without the luxury of time, I did not have the time to go into detail on how to paint or what colours to choose. And this somewhat freed a lot of the decisions that I had to make, which forced me to just go with the flow. This created that freedom mindset and I found it so relaxing and fun to paint in this sketchbook. Of course, there are also some drawbacks with cellulose papers where it is not suitable for glazing or with wet on wet techniques. Discussing on this topic will require a whole other video, so let me know in the comments below if you are interested to know more about the differences between cotton papers and cellulose papers and I'll come up with something in the next tutorial. Nevertheless, I would strongly encourage you to explore and play with the various types of paper out there to see which works best for you. You never know what you discover. 
Looking at the reference picture from a distance helps me to avoid getting bogged down in those tiny details while painting. Sometimes I like to squeeze my eyes until the picture looks blurry. Doing this creates that bokeh effect and helps me to visualize to see how the colors would look when it's loose and blended together. Now that I'm happy with my bokeh, let's go ahead and paint the glass jar. Note that I'm also leaving some white squares in between to give some highlight around the area. And then now I'm just adding more layers to fill in the darker tones of the shadows. And as you all know, to end the painting, I'll always go back to the darkest areas and bring back some highlights using white gouache or white ink pen. Finally, for the last tip, have fun and embrace imperfection. Creating loose florals is all about expressing the essence of the flowers rather than capturing every detail. Don't be afraid to embrace imperfection and have fun with your painting. And I'll see you in the next video.